Hello? Hello, one, two, three. Hello? Hello, one, two, three. Hello? Ninglawa? Hello? Ninglawa? Hello, one, two, three. Hello? Hello, one, two, three. Ninglawa? Ninglawa? Hello? Hello, one, two, three. Hello, Ninglava. Hello? Hello, just name, one, two, three. Hello? Hello, one, two, three. Hello? Hello, just name, one, two, three. Hello? Hello, just name, one, two, three. Hello, one, two, three. Hello? Hello, just name, one, two, three. Hello, one, two, three.
Hello. Hello, one, two. Hello. Hello, testing. One, two. Hello. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. One, two. Hello. Hello. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Hello. Hello, one, two, three. Hello. Hello, testing. One, two. Hello. Hello, one, two, three. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Hello. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Yeah. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. One, two. Hello, one, two, three. Hello. Hello. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Hello, one, two. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Hello, one, two, three. Hello. Hello, testing. One, two, three. That's all. We do it. My answer. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Hello, hello, testing one, two, three. Hello, one, two, three. Hello, hello, testing. Hello, testing. Hello, hello, one, two, three. Hello.
हेलो 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 दस ने वन टू हेलो हेलो दस ने वन टू हेलो वन टू हेलो हेलो दस ने हेलो दस ने हेलो हेलो वन टू थ्री Hello, hello, testing, hello, testing, hello, one, two, three, hello, one, two, hello, one, two, three, hello, one, two, three, hello, hello, testing, one, two, three, hello, hello, testing, one, two, three, hello, one, two, hello, up. Hello. Hello, testing one two. Hello, testing.
Very good morning, everyone. Very good morning and welcome back to ITBMU. And it's really a pleasure to see our old students, alumni. And would you please come forward, please move to the front. Our venerable monks and our Siali, dear Sialis, please come, move to the front. So today is students' activity, so students are all VIPs. Yes, thank you. So please fill up the front rows. So it, it is first come, first serve. We don't reserve seats. Please move. So today is the <coughs> program of the student activity and Okay, one more. Thank you. Thank you. So to briefly introduce with the program, we will have students experience sharing today, and we will have opening speech, keynote speech, and later 
students sharing their ex experiences and activities. And for the last program, there will be proposal for the establishment of ITBMU Alumni Association and concluding remarks. So this is the brief story of what we're going to do today. Uh, many more are coming. Yeah, please take a seat. We, we will start the ceremony soon. Oh, we have Venerable Pomong uh, Dauda Sondara from the Sitagum International Buddhist Academy as our special guest.
Uh, so today we have the students sharing program and we have the list of some students here who have given the list to share their experience. And I think we still have some to fill up. So here we have uh, the students list that is given here is Dr. Chan Sam An from Cambodia and Mr. Ryan Non from USA currently at ITBMU and Venerable Ratana Nanda Bande, Bangladesh and USA and the Chinese student, Fei. I can't read the first name, so I, I just read the second name, otherwise it would be funny. And Venerable Pamalka from Myanmar and Ashen, Dr. Ashen Wisoda from Pien Ule, Siale Barami from Indonesia, Venerable Mega Wihari from Sri Lanka, and Venerable Gusalaguna and Venerable Benyagara from USA. So uh, before we start the program, we have the honor and pleasure to invite our uh, senior venerables, our Dean Seattle's professors, associate professors, and uh, our special guests, uh, Venerable Dr. Dama Bia, Venerable Sondara, and the venerables from the first row. Could you please uh, come over to the stage? Thank you, Babia. Oh, Simbo, Joa Babia. Omono, Mama, Ashida, Simbo, Pemaresia. Guzala, Guzala, come here. Please take a seat. And then Ude Jaina, Jodiga, Uke Majara. Please have a seat here. Omoja, Anasilo Yava. Yeah, she would be like. Come here. You are past batch. We have students uh, from many batches, starting from our first batch up to the current students. Yeah, it's a pleasure and honor to have you all here today. Without your presence, we can't make anything so your presence is much appreciated yeah <clears throat> with the kind permission of our <clears throat> venerable shadows we would like to start our program very soon so 
please kindly be seated and please put your mobile phone in silent mode. You can also come to the front. So it's better to fill up the front rows, please, if you don't mind. Ah, Siaji. Yeah, we would like to invite Professor Dr. Anand Sin. So go to the second. Please be seated at the second row. On the, the other left, please. Sir, please mind you. Yes, in the second row, we have reserved the seat. Rakesh Kumar. Rakesh. So where can I miss it? Second row. Oh, oh, yes. oh. Yeah. The second row. Yes. So our hall is almost full. Please come and take a seat and like take photo later. We're going to start the ceremony soon. Please, please. Yo, Jeanne, that double yard, that dark horn, real by Jane. You dark horn, I'm out here by Jane, I'm home. I call them to join and they take for I was also taking photos so they're making fun of me. So we are already behind the time and today is the active students activity program and the special program for our alumni and the current students. So I will be your MC and it's my pleasure and honor to serve you as your master of ceremony as a first batch student, not as a teacher here, as a first batch student. And we have the programs today. So we are going to start. So uh, would you please uh, remain in silence so that we can start our program very soon. The first program is to open the our activity, students' activity by reciting Namo Dasa three times in paying homage to the Triple Gem. And the first speech is the opening speech that is to be delivered by Venerable Professor Dr. Janaka, Dean of the Faculty of Religions and Missionary Works of ITBMU, who is the first batch student. The second program is to deliver a keynote speech on student gathering activity. This is to be performed by Venerable Dr. Dhamma Bia, Chancellor Dhamma Deepa International Buddhist University, South Tripura in India. And we have met Venerable at the conferences. And after that, we have students sharing experience and their activities. Here, the first one, Dr. Chan San An from Cambodia. And the second one, Mr. Ryan Non from USA. And the third, Radhanat Nanda Bande from the Bangladesh and the United States of America. And the Chinese student, Lady Fei. 
and Venerable Pamalka from Myanmar is also sharing his experiences, but we don't have the uh, title yet. And Dr. Ashin Wisoda, the Wagura, the Majoria Center of the Ule is also sharing about his missionary experience to be followed by Siali Parami from Indonesia. After that, we have Venerable Mega Wihari from Sri Lanka, who is talking on the establishment of International Institute of Tirawada. And another one, the Majidia Project in Texas, USA, by Venerable Dr. Kusalaguna and Venerable Banyagara. After that, we have Q&A session. Then you will have a break, refreshment break. After the break, we have Sumitra Bandi from Laos, who is talking on the what ITBMU has given to me, to be followed by Venerable Ashin Sujeta from Myanmar, who is also sharing his missionary experience. We also have Venerable Jawana, Golden Shade Forest Ministry from Nidiro, talking about his missionary experience. And after that, to be followed by Venerable Mintik from Vietnam, who is uh, sharing his missionary activity through university education. Then later, we have four students who has been nominated here, Bende Abibono from Indonesia, Siali Dovana Sengi from Myanmar, uh, Venerable Su Wutwe from Cambodia, Venerable Gatenyuta from Malaysia, and Mr. Prakash Kumar from India to be followed by Q&A session. So <clears throat> students' activities here, five minutes is allotted for each student. And after that, <clears throat> we also <clears throat> sorry, should have the Alumni Association. And this is the proposal for the establishment of ITBMU Alumni Association and concluding remark to be performed by Venerable Professor Dr. Janda Mukha, second batch student. So this is the brief program of what we're going to do today. So not taking much of your time, shall we open our students' activity by paying homage to the Triple Gem by reciting Namo Dasa three times. Namo Dasa Begawado Arahado Sama Sambodasa Nemo dasa begawado arahado sama sambo dasa Nemo dasa begawado arahado sama sambo dasa So for the first program, may I warmly invite Venerable Professor Dr. Janaka Dean of Faculty of Religions and Missionary Works from ITBMU to deliver an opening speech. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to express my great uh, happiness to see you here and at the same place. I'm Venerable uh, Dada Janaga, one of the uh, first batch students. So our university was inaugurated 1998 December 9. So since then until now, we have more than 1,300 students. I hope 1,000 students are gathered here at today. So today is a great gathering since that university was opened. Great gathering, great congregations. Uh, therefore, like a Mahasamaya Soda, through a great gathering, we can get some benefit. Through the Mahasamya Soda, many deities are there 
had a chance to listen a very beneficial remark teaching from the Buddha. Uh, today also, many, many students are gathering here. So through that great gathering of congregations, uh, we can uh, get some benefit. And also, uh, we hope you share uh, your Dhamma experience, missionary activity, and this uh, gathering. I really very, very appreciate it uh, by seeing uh, different uh, faces uh, from uh, different uh, countries. So I know I do uh, speak uh, too much time, uh, many words, uh, because uh, we need to consider the time constraint. Uh, therefore, I would like to invite you to uh, cordially uh, discuss and share you are missionary activities the three uh, 25 years through 25 years. Uh, thank you very, very much. <clears throat> sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Yeah, we have two different traditions, sadhu and clapping hands. So, yes, yeah. So, Thank you very much, Venerable Dr. Janaka, for your warm and cordial welcome to our alumni and current <coughs> students of our <coughs> university. For the next item, may I kindly, warmly invite Venerable Dr. Dhamma Bia, Chancellor, Dhamma Deepa International Buddhist University, South Tripura, India, to deliver a keynote speech on our student gathering activity. Venerable Dr. Damabia, please. Namo Tas Bhagavatu Arahatu Sama Sambudhasa Buddham Saranang Gachami Dhammam Saranang Gachami Sangham Saranam Gachami Venerable members of Mahasangha, brothers, sisters, and friends in Dhamma, a very good morning to you all. morning. It's a really a great pleasure to be among you to have this opportunity to be part of alumni meet of ITBMU in Yangon, Myanmar today on 8th December, 2023. ITBMU, International Theravada Buddhist Missionary University in Yangon, Myanmar has completed quarter century of its journey. And today, the alumni of last 25 years, the students who have studied, passed out, and worked for sasana, for dhamma, in different parts of the world, 
they have come here to share experiences what we have achieved what we have done what we have undone what we can do what we are supposed to do and this alumni meet is a kind of platform or the time where we reconnect we rebuild and we recharge our energy to foster the future positive action to be undertaken as dhammadutas the buddhist missionary monks nuns lay followers upasakas and upasikas and this missionary motif is purely what buddha has guided us admonished us to carry out that is to take the message of the buddha to different corners of the world so that the path which is dukkha nirodha gamini patipada to deliver the suffering world from dukkha that is being achieved and this alumni meet is also an emotional meet in the sense you meet after so long years your old friends it becomes a nostalgic for many of us though i am not a student of itvmu directly but i am also part of this itvmu in some way and i'm sure we are alumni of the university of life the live university this is something a virtual university we all learn we all experience either from this university or that university but there is one university called the life university the life is full of experience we learn from life so we are here to share our experiences and learnings from our life university from our life mostly when we talk about universities and academic institutions we have the concept of learning for what may i ask a, a question mostly when we are in universities i don't mean this itbmu normally so we learn for what we learn for something right so we learn for earning learning for earning mostly you see but here our purpose and motive of learning is something unique i'm sure we are not here to learn exclusively for earning or meant for earning but we are here to learn in ITVMU to first learn and earn. Earning is not in terms of the finance or money, but 
earning the merit, the knowledge that can be transferred and transmitted. So here, I would like to bring up a few things as we are the students of Dhamma Dota, so missionary university. Do we have a strategic plan how the missionary is to be carried out in our own native land? We've come from different parts of the world. I am from India. There are people from Bangladesh, from Cambodia, Malaysia, Taiwan, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and some other countries. And we all know India had been and still is the land of Buddha. And Nepal had been and is the homeland of Siddhartha Gautama. The Buddha Dhamma sprang up and started from the land of Bharata, India, known as India today. And that spread across the globe, across the world. And Buddha Dhamma spread in India, to each and every part of India, for almost 900 years. From the time of Buddha, of course, then from 3rd century BC, when the great emperor Ashoka took up the active, well-planned missionary programs, it went on to spread in different parts of India, where it is state, two thirds of Indians, they accepted Dhamma and practiced Dhamma, what we call today, they became Buddhist. But as we all know, after some years, that is from 6th and 7th century AD or 9th and century AD, slowly the declining of Buddhism began in the homeland of Buddha in India. And we all know as a result of the Emperor Ashoka, the Dhamma missionary went far in the West to Afghanistan, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, even out to Greece. But today, those land, the countries, have very few people who follow Buddha Dhamma. We also know the land of the countries today known as Maldives. It was an island where Buddhism flourished once upon a time. Also Malaysia, Indonesia, and some other countries, the Buddha Dharma or Buddha Dhamma spread and flourished. But today's situation is something different. That is why, as missionary monks and nuns, we have to learn from the past how Buddha Dhamma flourished and was accepted, how it declined, the reasons. There might have been external reasons, there might have been internal reasons. It is not the case always that the external forces have destroyed. There might have been definitely the internal reasons 
among the Buddhist communities, there were weaknesses, degradation, lack of unity, cooperation, collaboration, and many other things which might have contributed to the decline of Buddhism in those countries, in those part of the world. So we now, standing in 21st century, have to think and work from the perspective and also need of the time. So what I say is the first responsibility and duty of every Buddhist, especially the Dhamma Dutta, monks and nuns and lay followers, is protection. We have to protect first the existing Buddhist communities, the Buddhist population. If there are no Buddhists in a country, in a land, who will follow, who will practice Dhamma, tell me? Who will protect the big, big, gigantic Buddha statues, monasteries, temples, viharas, meditation centers? Who will protect them? We first, we have to exist, we have to continue to exist as the followers of the Buddha. Then only they will protect the structure, the Dhamma. So the first thing is we have to plan how the existing Buddhist population can be retained. As we all know, the situation today in South Korea the Buddhist population in South Korea. Once upon a time, the Buddhist population, the percentage in South Korea was more than 50%, 60-70%. But today, if anybody is here from South Korea, will be able to tell it has declined, drastically declined to almost 20-25%. And the reason we all know, there is the influence and active missionaries of the other faith. It's fine, everybody has its own right to propagate the gospels or teaching of their faith, it's fine. But if we do not practice and keep our people on the flow of Dhamma, they will get dragged away and we will not have our people in future. It will be like how and what we have witnessed in, in the history of Buddhism in the world. So I'm very happy to be part of this alumni meet today. Before I leave, just for your information, as it was announced, Venerable Dr. Dhammapiya, Chancellor Dhammadipa International Buddhist University in South Tripura, India. So this is, I think, for the first time that something like this had been announced in the public. I did not know earlier. Earlier, I used to be introduced as the Secretary General of International Buddhist Confederation which is the umbrella body of global Buddhist world, the community based in New Delhi. Recently, I came out from the resp um, this uh, responsibility of Secretary General of IVC and handed over the charge to my colleague, Venerable Shastri Jangchup Chudenji. And the executive members and all the people of 
IBC, they have made me as president of IBC. So now my identity became new. The chancellor, Dhammadipa International Buddhist University in Tripura. That this is the first Buddhist university you can say that is coming up in India. The, the kind of university, the Buddhist university to be run and monitored by the Buddhist Sangha, led by Buddhist Sangha, you can see. In India, we have Buddhist departments in different universities. We do have a few Buddhist universities like Nav Nalanda Mahavihara, deemed to be university. We have GBU, Gautam Buddha University. We have in Madhya Pradesh, Sanchi, one university, I think that is Sanchi University of Indic Studies, or Indian Buddhist Studies or something like that. We do have, but a university which is run by the Buddhists of India. The Buddhists of India means the Buddhist Sangha members. We do not have. And this Dhammadipa International Buddhist University, we are trying to bring it up with the objectives that ITBMU has. And our objective is national, that is, to reestablish the teachings of the Buddha Dhamma in the homeland of Buddha in India, Bharata, and also it has global perspective. How we as Buddhists can make impact globally in the global arena. How we can address the global issues. How we Buddhists can make the teachings of the Globally, I would like to have some maybe. There is a Mara in between. Okay. So I would, in, it's, I'm at the last, the last of my speech. Yes, I would like to invite you all to come and join hands with us to protect, promote, and importantly preserve and propagate. Buddha Dhamma, as I have been working as Secretary General of International Buddhist Confederation for some time, I had to deal with the people when they in India and elsewhere abroad. It's a newly coming out university, as you know. In India, we have to follow the UDC guidelines. It's a regulated by the University Grand Commission. So there are many things you have to follow. It will be full-fledged university approved by the government of India. The University Grand Commission under the State Assembly Act of Tripura. It is not a fake or fraud university. It's a full-fledged university. The first time you can say a private Buddhist university coming up in India after the demolition of the ancient historical Nalanda University. After the demolition and destruction of Nalanda University in 11th and 12th century AD, you don't have or we don't have any Buddhist university in India till date which is dedicated 
for the promotion and propagation of Buddha Dhamma by Buddhist Sangha members. So I humbly request you to join us in the endeavor so that Anya Maya, you support us, we support you. So we all collectively support the Dhamma to progress for the welfare benefit of all living beings in the world, in the universe. Thank you so much, everyone. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, thank you very much, Venerable Dr. Damabia, for highlighting the very important and unique objective of learning Buddha Dhamma, not to earn, but to share and impart the Dhamma knowledge. <clears throat> and also that we are very much <clears throat> delighted to hear the establishment of the first Buddhist private university the Matiba Buddhist University in the South um, India, sorry, South Tripura, and also your kind reminder and on how Buddhism has recli reclined and declined in India and different parts of the world and our uh, duty to maintain, sustain and protect the teachings of the Buddha so that it can last long, which is the main objective of the ITPMU. Thank you very much once again for your very um, heartwarming and the impressive speech. For the next item, uh, we will start with the students' activity. So for the first, may I cordially invite Dr. Chan San Am from Cambodia, who is going to share his experience. So <clears throat> everyone who, who are going to share your experience, please briefly introduce yourself, your year of uh, enrollment, including this. Thank you. So allotment of time for each student alumni is five minutes. So please, it's very short, but please uh, keep the time so that we can have more alumni to share. Thank you. Good morning. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. And first of all, I would like to pay my respect to all our psychologists and psychos, ladies and gentlemen, who are coming to attend this alumni activity of ITBMU. Because we don't have much time, and I would like to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Dr. Chan Sun An. I am from the for Dutch student of ITBMU. I was here about 20 years ago. And today I am very happy to be back to our university. And I'm very pleased to meet all of you again. <laughs> like early of this morning, we already heard to profound Sayado who explain about our missionary work and the story of the glorious time of Buddhism and the declining time of Buddhism. Actually, I have another topic to share, but according to what I listened to Venerable Dr. Panyabiya, he explained about the historical about glory of Buddhism and the declining Buddhism. But I didn't hear about the solution, how we solve the, pro the problem, how to keep our Buddhism glory. But we heard about the declining, but no solution yet. That's why I would like to share. Here in name, we are the Dhamma Dutta. Dhamma Dutta that can perform a very good missionary work, we must be a human being. Any more cannot be a Dhamma Dutta. Plants, tree, water, mountain cannot be a Dhamma Dutta. Only human being that can be a Dhamma Dutta. 
only human being that can bring all the teaching of the law buddha to the other human being actually at the moment we are dividing our clans into burmese into cambodia into india into american into you know like european and blah 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 but in fact we are the human clans we belonging to to the human race but we are the people who put the logo on our forehead that's why we forget what we are and why we are coming to the earth actually you know like in daily life i talk to my friend we are coming to this earth is just a tourist god of buddha allowing us to come to this earth for 100 years and now we are almost 50 years plus and we do not know how many years that we are going to be on earth so that's why i talk to my friend stop doing bad thing and try to do only good thing for our next generation so they ask me how i say we doing as a human what does it mean of the word human for me i give four uh, category of the word human from the word h u m a n and this human word can be a very good key for the dhammatutta number one h refer to humble human being must humble monks lay devotees must be humble not to be arrogant learn to be humble the more we humble the more we learn the more we humble the more they like us this is the word h and number two you from the word understanding we need to understand from each other we need to understand from our weak point strong point opportunity and threat some people they don't understand even their strong point and weak point and then they just wishing for the opportunity how can we get the opportunity if we do, if we don't even know about our strong point and weak point because we don't have much time i just go a little bit fast and number three is m learning buddhism is good learning buddha dharma is good but don't forget learning about management management is very important everything is under management if we do not know about management we cannot propagate our buddha dharma don't make yourself be blind or fader you believe with the wisdom so you need to learn about management in management theory there are many theory from the western scholar are peak they are quote the point from buddhism for example like like some subject in management they say ethical uh, business or organizational behavior they taught that in the university how to behave this is about management and m again it referred to motivation learn how to motivate motivate yourself and motivate your friend in order to bring the great buddha dharma to the world like today's itbmu did a very good job now doing a very good job concerning with motivation itbmu spent a lot of money to teach to train you and now they celebrate this alumni activity and 
my TBMU motivate all of you to go around the world and preach the Buddha Dhamma to the other people who may not know about Buddhism. And number four is about A. A is about attitude positive. Learning about the discipline. When we are talking about attitude positive, it refers to discipline. Monks, nuns, and lay devotees who do not obey the discipline, who do not have good vinaya, they will not gain any respect. So attitude positive is the most important for every human being. For the monks, you need to obey Vinaya, respect Vinaya, follow the Vinaya code. For the lay devotees, also have to respect the law of the country, the law of the sasana. And then you have to tame yourself to be a good people of all the times. Then they will listen to you. If you behave bad, how can they listen to you? And number five for the human is N. I said N is about networking. We need network. Now you can see ITBMU play a very important role for networking, appealing all of the students from all over the world to come to Rangoon especially in this university. This one we call networking, but this networking is not enough. We need to do more, more and more. Networking keep continuously, never stop. It's just like diplomatics. It's just like foreign, uh, foreign affair. Make good friends to all the people around the world. If you be able to make good friend all around the world it means you have a lot of kalyana mita only kalyana mita that can help us so and networking please network keep network and for another eight word we call sami saki if you want to propagate buddhism well you need to have Four or four S. Number one, structure. You you must have structure, properly structure. Number two, system. Number four, standard. Number four, uh, number three, standard. Number four, strategy. You cannot propagate. You cannot bring Buddhism to the other part of the world without good structure without good system, without good standard, and without strategy. This is very important. You must understand that. And A has three words. Number one, you have to make yourself ability. Again, the word ability. Number two, arts. Number three, attitude positive. And M, concerning with management and motivation. And E, use experience. You have to equip yourself with experience. If you have less experience, you can ask to your senior. You can ask to your teacher. Yeah, could you please wind up? Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. It's very good to learn, but we also see the time for others. Thank you. Okay, so thank yeah. you very much for allowing me to speak. Actually, you know, like a very short time. But we will find a way, if you have any question, this is the way that we can talk. Maybe I talk a little bit different from the others, but it will be very good for you to consider how to propagate our Buddha Dharma to the rest, to the other part of the world. And finally, I would like to say thank you to our great Sayadors and to our Sayadors and all our alumni students. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chan San Am. Um, then we have learned a lot from you, how you have interpreted the word human as human 
humble understanding, manageable with positive attitude and networking on all your 4S structure, system, standard, and strategy. Thank you once again. So for the next, may I cordially invite uh, Mr. Ryan North from USA to share his thoughts and experience. Yes, five minutes and now one minute span. <laughs> For the next, Ratana Nanda Bande. So please be prepared after him. Okay, yeah, so. Maybe I think you can come and sit next to Venerable Dr. Chanda Mukha. Yes. Uh, good morning. Morning, respectable Sayadors. Morning, respectable teachers. Uh, if yeah. you have invited okay. guests and all the Dhamma dam brother and sister. So my name is Ryan Nong. So in fact, I'm a current student here at ITNU in the uh, a master program specializing in the Pali language. So I'm going to try to, to, to share some of my experience in doing the uh, uh, missionary work. So I remember the first time after I finished my uh, diploma class, so a group of us, uh, four students, in, in fact, there are three uh, uh, summoners, three uh, novices and one uh, lay people the ruling man, we went to uh, Malaysia in uh, yeah in Malaysia to do some missionary work right after finishing our diploma class, and it was very uh, rewarding experience because when we went there, we had a little chance to uh, share some of our knowledge, even though it was very little at the time. And then uh, since then, uh, while studying at ITBMU here, I'm also trying my best to um, uh, translating some of the. Uh, um, books, lectures, and a number of talks by uh, our um, respectable Sayadors here at Myanmar, especially like uh, uh, Sayadaw, Lady Sayadors, our first uh, rector Sayadaw, uh, Dr. Usila uh, um, Wangsa, uh, and then our second rector Sayadaw as well, as the uh, Sayadaw Ananda uh, Malawi Wangsa as well. And then I also trying to uh, conducting some of the uh, uh, classes teaching basic Pali and basic Abhidhamma. So based on those experience, I can say that, uh, and I, uh, I also would like to share this to everyone that what we've been doing now is not only for us. Okay? So of course we're doing here, we're studying here, first is for us to study and practice in the Dhamma for our own benefits. But we are doing that for everyone out there as well. Because based on my experience, there is a thirst for Dhamma out there. So please keep trying to study and when you go back to your country, when you share your Dhamma knowledge to everyone, that's very rewarding. And of course, all of those experiences wouldn't be happening were it not for the um, compassion and hosp hospitality of the Myanmar people, especially for ITBNU, of course, because of all of the respectable Sayadaws for their um, effortless compassions to teachers. So uh, in wrapping to save time, so I'm going to take a few minutes to read out a Pali poem I wrote in um, dedication to IDBNU on her 25th birthday. And along the way, I'm going to try to translate that into English so that everyone can understand. Purita dasa paramito upachitona loka so tang about 2,500 years ago, the Buddha, who had fulfilled the 10 perfections, appeared and expounded the Dhamma for the welfare of the world. The great people in the country of Myanmar after studying and practicing that Dhamma, had become the stronghold and protector of the Buddha's teaching. Nana Ratiya Vicha, Layo Maha Upari Panjawi Satiya, Wasa Nang Yangong Bura, Santapito Dhamma Toyo. 25 years ago, an international university was established in the city of Yangong as a Dhamma messenger. Ajaya Susikha Pita 
ศิษาเอตัมดิเทราวาดัสเมนปริยติยาดิมนุกตาสุขิตาจานัจินาสาสนัสเมนดิเอติสเทราวาดาบุริสบุริสยูนิเวอร์ซิตี้สตูเดนส์ผู้อาวุโสเทรนด์ไปที่เจ้าส์ฮัฟฮัฟฟิลีปฏิเสธกันในการเรียนรู้และการปฏิสิงในดัมมาปริปูริตาสิกขณะวิดิศิษาปัจจากตาสยังจตาสกัดเจสดัมมาดูตาดัมเมลาบังวิวิปัจจตาโร Students who have completed the course of training have returned and become Dharma messengers themselves in their own countries, sharing their achievement in the Dharma. Uttama Kiriya Vidi Dvipa, Uttama Sasana Jirata Tathanhi, Aharita Vichalaya Kato Bahu Janasa Sambatteng. The noble course of actions arranged, managed, and performed by the university. For the long-lasting of the Buddha's teachings, indeed, has brought happiness and prosperity to many people. So, uh, I'll be back again, assisting Sayadaw, uh, Dr. Chandamukha later on in the establishment of the um, Alumni Association. Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ryan Non, for. Uh, keeping the time and also we are very impressed with that as a lay student learner of uh, Dhamma you have composed a Pali poem in honor of the ITBMU and the learning of the Buddha Dhamma. For the next I would like to cordially invite Venerable Ratana Nanda Bandi originally from Bangladesh and now I think in the UN United States. Venerable please. For the next, the Chinese lady Fei, please be prepared. Mingalawa. I believe all of you, even the foreigners, remember at least this word, Mingalawa. So, sorry for starting with the Burmese because Burmese is a such a precious learning, uh, precious language for learning Buddhism. At first. At the beginning of my speech, I would like to pay my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of Bangladesh Buddhist community and the Bangladeshi students, those who have studied at this university. Gratitude towards every corner of Myanmar people, beyond the religion, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, or Hindu, whatever, because this university learning by the public people of Myanmar. And the next, my gratitude to all my teachers, Siama, and the most I'm missing the since I arrived here, our, my time, the professor, our uh, doctor, Pamukha Josiado Nandamala Vivangsa. The time I was in here in Myanmar, uh, I went to Samyata Meditation Center. At the time I met, one Japanese man who asked me a question, uh, how about the Mahayana Buddhism in Bangladesh? I directly said, no, no, no. In Bangladesh, there is no Mahayana Buddhism. But he opened my eyes. He said, how about the Atisha Divankara? Oh, then I came to know Atisha Divankara, who was one of the founder of Tibetan Buddhism today. After then, the day convocation day here, 2012, the Nandamala Siadoji make us promise to everyone the Dhamma, the teaching you are learning here. Will you share it for the needy, for the world? Then we all promise, yes, Venerable Sir, from the time my mind always teaching me, how can I share this Dhamma? Then after I went to Sri Lanka, I came to study the Sutta Purnavara Sutta who went to Suna Puranta. This is a very big message for the missionary monks. The Puna asked by the Buddha, you are going a place where the people are very dangerous. If they scold you, what will you do? Bhante, Buddha, they will just scold me, no problem. If they beat you, no problem. They will beat, just beat me. If they kill you, no problem. I will die for Dhamma. So this is a big, a statement I learned after I went to Sri Lanka for the missionary work. Since then, I went to the university to universities, 
country to country for the missionary work. I hope the next slide. Then you can see my first experience for the university to university. I was as a visiting lecturer at the Sri Lanka International Buddhist Ikan Academy in Sri Lanka. The next, I went to Malaysia at the University of Science. I was gathering and was teaching the science student in Malaysia. The next in Myanmar at the Mandalay Global Fish University. Also, I got a chance to share the knowledge. Ramayana Narata Buddhist University in Malimiai, Buddhist College in Sumatra, Indonesia, and the same time in the Nepal at Kathmandu, Venerable Yana Purnika's Temple, which is at like a Theravada Buddhist Institute. Also, I got a chance to share my knowledge. This is just for academy, for country to country. I would like to mention the most is the Uganda in Africa. I went there before going there. Even my friend, my teacher asked, Uganda is a country of Idi Amin, the terrorist. How will you go to Uganda? Everybody has scared me, but I was not scared with the message of Kuna, as the Sutta mentioned. Then I went there, I found so precious to promulgate the Buddhism. A potentiality is more than the concrete forest country like America or Europe. Africa really, really having a lot of potentiality to promulgate the Dhamma. And also, not only the Uganda, in Uganda, my most, I would like to say what I have done for the first time, not only in Uganda, in Africa continent. As a Buddhist monk, I started the arms round for the first time. Not only arms round, we established the first Buddhist Sima, the first Buddhist international conference in Africa continent. All these were through the, my hand. I remember when I was from Sitagu Siado, and the DCS also was there in Uganda. The next, I would like to say today in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is very like analytically, analyzingly based, not just studying here and there. That's why they are saying that Buddha, the, the Abhidhamma is not the direct teachings. Sri Lanka, they used to say like that. In such kinds of environment, I would like to say here is just, it seems like I'm like a self talking, but I believe this is the right place, right conditions, right situations to talk what I did as a missionary monks at, as I got the teachings from this university. So in that kinds of environment in Sri Lanka, I taught hundreds of students Abhidhamma. Today, hundreds of students, they know Chitta, Chaitashika, Rupa, at the minimum level, at least they know the name of Abhidhamma seven books, where it's like a desert for Abhidhamma. Not only the Abhidhamma, with the meditations and more. The most also I'd like to mention in Sri Lanka, the, for the first time, a school a student girls who memorized the Patana, Uddesa, and I took a written exams for the first time in Sri Lanka. In a Buddhist country, I'm from Bangladesh. I'm doing that work with the energy I got this from university. At the same time, also I did the missionary work in China, in South Korea, in Malaysia, Singapore, as well in India. So I would like to say all this uh, just because giving a report to this university, I would like to say mother university, what has given me, I am not misusing. I'm trying my best use the energy I got from this university. Again, I would like to say thanks to our Dr. Nandamala Siyadoji, really missing, and all the Siyados, the Siyama, Dr. Yujana Yani, I always bother her. Sometimes I don't know, she may get angry with me. If any question about Abhidhamma, I always ask her. And I remember our Siado, Dr. Uh, Chandamukha Siado, who taught us Abhidhamma, our Tejaniya Siado, Indyaka Siado, Achinna Siado, especially taught us Abhidhamma. And all the teachers, I pay my heartfelt gratitude. Thank you all. May all beings be happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.
Thank you so much, Venerable Ratanat Nanda Bande, for sharing your missionary experience and how you have established Damar in the Africa by starting for Armstrong and uh, organizing international Buddhist conference and organizing a Bidama and meditation retreat and all the more. Thank you once again. For the next, I would like to invite our student Zhu Xiaofei from China, who will talk about Buddhist translate Buddhist text translation and Buddhist interpretation. Zhu Xiaofei, please. Um, all respected venerables and all our uh, all my dear Dhamma brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's my great honor to be here uh, to uh, give a speech before all of you and on this auspicious occasion commemorating the 25th anniversary of ITBMU. So please, uh, first of all, please allow me to introduce myself a bit. Uh, my name is Fei. I come from China. And I entered ITBMU in 2015 and graduated from here in 2018. So after my graduation from uh, BAB here, then I was fortunate enough to apply uh, to uh, pursue an MA studies, MA degree in Buddhist studies in uh, the Center of, Buddhist, uh, Center of Buddhist Studies in the University of Hong Kong. And because due to the solid foundation from um, the three years studies and practice that I accumulated uh, in ITBMU and I successfully and smoothly finished my MA degree and uh, graduate as the top student uh, of my batch. And after that, uh, I uh, collaborated with a friend from Netherlands to translate some Dhamma passages about meditation uh, taught by our master from Thai to Chinese. So uh, this is the Facebook account that we used to run, but now uh, we are not updating anymore because we are kindly like, we have already joined the official voluntary group, like voluntary Dhamma group. So uh, our translations will be reviewed and uh, published in a more official way. And this is actually, oh, sorry, this is another WeChat account that we used to run. And uh, so I think I have done this job for like over one year and we have translated more than 50 Dhamma passages. This is actually is a voluntary work, uh, but it allowed me to participate in the Dhamma sharing uh, of the Buddhist message to many people. And it helped me gain experience in Dhamma translation. So after this one year, soon I became a translator in the English base for the Buddhist exchange, or we can shortly call it EBBE, English base for Buddhist exchange in China. And in the position of a vice director of office. So please uh, allow me to introduce this uh, base a little bit. This space is organized by the Buddhist Association of China uh, and uh, with the coordination from the Buddhist Association of Guangdong Province and the Guangxiao Temple in Guangzhou City. So the Buddhist Association of China is a little bit like, like uh, the Sangja, uh, Sangha Committee, something like that in China. So it is an official government supervisory organ organization of Buddhism in China. And our director, the director of EBBE, he is currently the vice president of BAC, that is Buddhist Association of China. So what we are, this is our official website and uh, what we have been doing, I'll uh, introduce a little bit. So this is our director, Venerable Mingsheng. Uh, he's uh, the director of the base. So EBB aims to promote Buddhist uh, international exchange in mainly in four ways. So we have been divided into different groups. Currently we have translation group, 
we have research group, teaching group, and multimedia group. So we not only uh, focus on translation, uh, like uh, Buddhist texts between Chinese and English, and we also have some other languages, like we have Korean, Japanese, Germany, Thai, etc. Uh, also, we sometimes we will be invited to uh, the international conferences or forums and to provide them with uh, interpreting services. Uh, we'll see it later. We have some photos there. And for the research group, then our focus is mainly on the modern developing developments of Buddhism. Uh, currently, our research group is not like very full-fledged, but uh, we are still working on it. Uh, I think in the future, we may hold, organize more conferences. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing you, uh, you know, joining our conferences maybe in the future. Okay, and multimedia group, so we also create videos. And uh, we used to uh, complete a project that is a, an e-tour guide for temples, like it's multilingual. Uh, we have English version, Korean version, Japanese per version, Thai version, Germany version, Russian version. So it's kind of like if you scan the QR code and you can simply like uh, travel around the temple on your phone and with um, uh, video, uh, with uh, audios. So with like, um, you can listen to the introduction and teaching group. So we are designing uh, some textbooks, like uh, kind of like for monastics in China, China, because in China, the Chinese monastics, they, many of them, they lack uh, the capacity of English in the Buddhist context, which means that there are a lot of Buddhist terms, uh, but maybe you can speak very good English, but you may not know how to speak such Buddhist terms in English. So we designed such te textbooks for, uh, for these monastics, and we will choose those uh, sentence examples related to Buddhism. And we also organize English training courses. And this year, just in September, we just organized uh, an English training courses and we have invited a lot of like scholars, lecturers from abroad, mainly from Thailand uh, and also from uh, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, I think uh, a lot of lecturers to give us lectures. So uh, this is what we mainly do. And we also, this is uh, our interpreting uh, kind of like activity in China. We just we just finished in November, uh, in October. So the EBB completes translations and interpretations for the fifth Maritime Silk Road Buddhist Forum. Uh, so we joined such kind of for forums and we acted as, we served as interpreters and translators in such kind of forums. And this is uh, in the seminar, uh, part of the Buddhist forum. And we are, so a few of us, and the monk in the middle, like um, in the monk in gray robe, he's the executive dean of our EBBE, and he graduated from Mahachula Long Kong. Uh, he also used to visit Myanmar, visit a lot of meditation centers. As far as I know, he used to visit Pao, uh, Daingu, and uh, Sun Moon meditation centers. So I used to discuss meditation with him a lot. So, and this is please wind up, please. Thank yes, you. okay. And so these uh, are some other um, pictures and activities that we organize. So this is just for my work, and I'm also in the field of meditation. I'm also working as a voluntary interpreter for my meditation master, uh, Ajahn Pramod from Thailand. So uh, uh, this is just like some, I'm also working as an, a voluntary interpreter. That's also what I uh, wish to mention because meditation has occupied a very important part of my life as well. And to wrap up my speech, and first of all, I would like to express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to ITBMU because I think because of the three year studies and practice here, I have learned a lot and it has laid a very solid foundation and it has supported me a lot uh, in my future studies and work. So again, I would like to say thank you to ITBMU and I also look forward to 
any possible future cooperation with uh, between EBV and uh, maybe other Buddhist uh, colleges, universities, institutions, and centers. So uh, thank you very much, and may everyone be happy and grow in Dhamma. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jing Xiaofei, for sharing your experience in interpreting the Dhamma, and also your gratitude that how ITBMU had laid a solid foundation in, in your future and in your work experience and how three years of experience from here enable you to graduate at the University of Hong Kong as a top student. And also congratulations for being a voluntary interpreter of Dhamma. So for the next, I would like to cordially invite Venerable Pa Maoka from Myanmar to share his experience. The next would be Venerable Ashen, Dr. Ashen Wisoda for your information. Thank you. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambo dasa. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambo dasa. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambo dasa. Most venerable bandits, bandits, nuns, ladies and gentlemen, very, very good morning to you all. <laughs> so I would like to, my name is Pamokha, venerable Pamokha. So I joined NDVMU in 2007 and 2008. I'm studying in DVMU up to 2014. I finished my master's degree in 2014. So after I finished my master's degree, I meet with the Abaya Bande. So now he has just showed me Abaya Bande. So I, Abaya Bande set me. So if you want to go to India to teach Dhamma, so you can go. Uh, he invited me as a Dhamma Duda. So after submitting my thesis in IDBMU, I'm set to Abhya Bande. So, okay, I, I will go for one year. I will go uh, to India to do missionary work for one year. So he also okay, agreed. He, uh, he informed to my body society in Bangalore, India. So after that, I went to my body society, Bangalore, India. Then I, I teach. So when I taught with the Abhya Bande, I said him, if possible, I would like to join PhD program in India. If you have any link with the university, so please send me. So can I join PhD program in India and Bangalore? So that why uh, he said that why not sure. When you reach there, you inquire. Uh, you inquire. If possible, you can join. He said. He said like that. So okay, I said him. Okay, if possible, I will join. If not, I will not join and I will do missionary work for one year. After that, I will come back to Burma like that. So when I reached to Bangalore, so I had to teach Abhidhamma and Bali and Winia mostly. So in my body society, there are Around about 150 novices, Indian and Indian novices. Around about 25, 30 bandits. So in 2015, I can join uh, my PhD program in Tongko University, Tongko City, in Karnataka State. 
So I have to do uh, machinery work and doing my basic program up to 2025. So what then those years, sometimes I'm going back to Myanmar. So sometimes I'm uh, I had to bring some Burmese bandits, uh, like the Gandama bandits. Yeah, yes, good thing. So Gandama, I, I bring Gandama bandits and another one bandit. I forgot his name. And then next year, I bring Sali Okansi from Antibianju. So they also came to Bangalore and they teach bandits. They do missionary work. So before us, there are five bandits from Mandalay, Wapis, Kalope, Wapis University. So they also came to Bangalore and they teach, they do missionary work for, and four bandits are only for three months. One wasa wasa only. One bandit did missionary work for two years. So for uh, high bandit from Mandalay, they went back after one wasa wasa. And one Gandama bandits and another bandit also, they went back after one year. Sally Ogansi also, she went back after, I think, one and a half year. So what they say, what kind of problem to stay in India is food problem. No? Food problem. Yeah, as you know, we Burmese bandits are taking lunch and breakfast every morning and every lunch. Uh, every every lunch and breakfast with their meal, pears, pork curry, meat curry, so like that. So, but in in, in Maori society, they feed vegetarian. Uh, sometimes they they feed they give us egg, and one week one time so like that. So most of the Burmese bandit they have to face with the food problem. They cannot survive with the vegetarian food. So that is main problem. No, because of two problems, they go back. <laughs> no? So, and then I had to meet with some bandits. So, they also would like to do missionary work, but they have uh, language problem. They cannot speak in English, they cannot teach in English. So, that is one problem. <laughs> so, for me, why I can stay up to 2021? Yeah, actually, whenever I came back to Myanmar, I had to bring Ngabi Ngachao from the Myanmar. So what the Ngabi Ngachao, I had to survive in India. No? So one time, uh, I think in 2015, uh, when I went to, first time when I went to Bangalore, I bring so many ngapi ngachows from the young girl. So uh, uh, at, uh, I did, at the uh, Marriott Art, Wasa Wasa in 2015, all ngapi ngachows are finished. Okay, could you please wind up over seven minutes, please? Okay. <laughs> so it's not a joke, so that many students can share, okay? Not my time, your time. Yes, please understand. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we need to survive. How to say? What there? Okay, we need we need to for the missionary was we need to have language skill. What the uh, most especially in English, no? And then we need to survive with the local food. We need to try for the missionary work. We need to pay patience, kanti and meta. So what the kanti meta uh, language uh, surviving with the local food we can do missionary work. So. You all, may you all can do missionary work all over the world to spread Buddha Dhamma to get world welfare of the world peace. Thank you all. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much, Pamaoka, for sharing your challenges that you have met in your Dhamma to talk work in Bangalore, India. And for the next I would like to cordially invite Venerable Dr. Ashin Wisoda, Dawakura, Dawaku, the Materia Center in Tiule, 
for sharing his missionary experience. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good morning, respected our teacher, Sarah Rose, and Dhamma brother and sister. Very good morning. Good morning. Okay. And so, <laughs> last night I talked already from the Bible group to provide the internet connection to present one website I want to introduce. But now let's conclude that and then that's not available. So sorry. <laughs> okay. Never mind. May I introduce myself? I am Venerable Wilsoda. I'm from Yewunwen, my Tambe, is a Tawagu, uh, originally Tawagu Dora Monastery. But when I get there, I changed the Tawagu Damasriya Center. I open for Damasriya students. And not only Damasriya lesson, but also English language I teach there. That Damasriya lesson is my major subject, English and minor, the student can choose. Um, I am 20, 2005 and 2006, but I got a degree from this IVVNU, our mother university. After I made a degree, I got the chance to do research in the Mark Chai Dividega project. This project aims to produce the critical version of Dividega. So I was there for six years. After that, I got I come back to Yunlin and handed and manage the Tawagu Tawasriya Center. Now in my Dambe, actually the Dambe is a very small, in small village. I do small missionary work. I have Damascus, I open Damascus, about 100 students come and study. Uh, I have the Damasaja team every few Monday and new Monday, they come to Dambe and chant. Uh, I open once a year the meditation course, the small, small missionary work. Uh, at the same time, I had the connection, I had contact with our classmate, and the Asian commander from Indonesia. He is a co-moderate in our batch. Actually, the purpose of this presentation is I want to introduce our project, our project. But uh, you, you, okay, please, uh, you just noted we had the one project that's called Dhamma Wihari Nesia Translation Project. We are doing translation all Pali and uh, Takara Nesia into English and after that into. Indonesia Bahasa. Because this, why this project come to exist is that Malaysian community he always ask about the Pali and Takara, not only to me, but also our classmate, our teacher. Whatever he asks, the program for him is very easy for us. Whatever he asks, we can answer easily. So he asked me, Nani, why your mama is a good at TV the guy? Your mama is very smart. Nani, actually, your mama is smart, a good at TV the guy, not because of their own capacity. Yeah, their own capacity is about 50%. We had a lot of heritage from the Asian theology. We had a lot of vote. We have the Nesia. All the Nesia, yes, Bali Nesia, Tagra Nesia, even the Tiga Nesia we had. So when they came in that wish to have such a translation into Indonesian language. So we discussed one day, 
we were two, one project. So we, how to say, Jessica and I am like a coordinator or organizer. He is a, like a chief of the, the president of that project. The Indonesia Lady Body sponsor that project. I request our respected teacher and our classmate who can join and translate. So some of them uh, agree and we work together. We launched the first this past January 2020, the three year already. We had them Michima Migaya Ali Nesia and Kagra Nesia Witness. Sanyoda Nigaya Bali and Commentary Kagra Nesia or Witness. Now we are doing Niga Nigaya. So for the your information. We do like this, just I, I will read some passage, you know. Uh, the, the, the procedure of our project is that first we had to change from PDF to WAP file. And WAP file to ASAP file. I import ASAP file every word, line by line, WAP by WAP. The translator will translate the, into English WAP for WAP. Uh, you cannot get the prose translation. That's a one by one translation. For example, I will read it out. Oh. You can you can search in the internet any browser, malinesia.com. Malinesia.com. And then we put the other translation work. We had the English translation and now Bahasa, Indonesia Bahasa translation, not all the one must start trying to unload, but we cannot get the entire. But some of that you can read. For example, may I read? Uh Andy Shimpia Gasaba. Reverend Sa Gasaba. He done so done. He down so down e seka so go this seka so da me me a jano ananda di by me e ananda bagawado mya so via e from the other boda samuka mya maudoma from the present e won e do das so down ja by via and so wan kolan Bali, Yama Bali, Yama alphabet, and second column, Yama Nesia, Yama language. Third column, Roman Bali. The fourth column, English translation. And you can just Bali Nesia token. Now we are doing this one. We have the, right now we have the five scholar, translator. And for the blue reading, I had some reader so i hope we can do we will do the whole tp data this is because i can do because of idb and you without idb and you i cannot do we cannot do so the bandit camera also wish to come and join he want to express his great thank to idb and you unfortunately he cannot join he has to visit it so on the behalf of our project, I can here and to introduce our novel project, that's our pride. Okay, without any VNU, we can change novel projects. That's why I really, really thank any VNU and really thank our classmate and our pilot teacher. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Venerable Dr. Visoda, for um, organizing and coordinating the 
balinesia.com project where we can have word for word translation of uh, Bali into English. Uh, and congratulations on your hard work and achievements. For the next, I would like to welcome Siali Barami from Indonesia to do presentation. We are quite behind the time. And actually, I wish that there is always question and answer uh, at the after each presentation. But even now, we, maybe we have to leave Q&A session because the first session is scheduled to finish about 9.30 and we are already 10 and we still have some speakers for the first section. And we wish that everyone speak. Yes, Yali, please. Good morning. First of all, I would like to express my first gratitude to most venerable Mahasangha members here in the stage and also venerable lecturers of IPPMU and also venerable Dhamma brothers, sisters and friends. This experience topic, I will take on missionary activity to education through university education. So first of all, I would like to, ex to share my experience. Mm. For many years, I've been traveled to learn Buddhism in abroad. It's uh, about four, 10 years. And it's fortunate for me to land in this university, which provides the great curriculum of our studies. Um, sorry, uh, first of all, I let me introduce myself. My name is Parami. I'm the current student DAB. Okay, um, so this university provides the curriculum which I have never been learning in another university especially in an abroad. Although in Indonesia, Buddhist religion is minority, but we don't give up to spread the Buddha Sasana. In this occasion, especially I have the Buddhist studies in Indonesia named Dhamma Vihari, Buddhist Studies. And I really appreciate and gratitude to my teacher, as the name is uh, Venerable Asin Keminda, is my spiritual teacher, who could not participate in this occasion because of uh, an important reason. Through the curriculum of university, we have learned with many um, with many syllabus and subjects which train us to be the better student, especially to balance the IQ, EQ, and SQ. Only intelligence is not enough. We have to balance emotional, especially to build our self-discipline, and we later develop the spiritual quality. We know that Dhamma Dana is the highest offering. To be the Dhamma Dutta for monks and nuns, we keep this authentic Buddhist teaching in our heart. Therefore, we don't give up easily. We have to move forward wherever we are. Whatever the religion Buddhist is the minority, we don't need to give up. So this is my message and my experience for all of you. Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, thank you very much, Siali Maparami, for 
sharing your missionary activities through university education and your gratitude and on in highlighting the curriculum offered by ITBMU is uh, where you have never experienced in any other Buddhist in institutions abroad and also your high spirit uh, to stand as a Buddhist regardless of being minority and also to build IQ, EQ and SQ in ourselves in learning and sharing of the Dharma. Thank you once again. And for the next we have Venerable Megha Vihari from Sri Lanka, who will talk on establishment of in International Institute of Theravada IIT. Venerable Megha Vihari, please. After Venerable Megha Vihari, we have a um, team presentation for Venerable Dr. Kusala Guna and Venerable Penyakara. So to be able to prepare ahead. Thank you. First of all, may I ask permission from uh, all my teachers? Please me. use the recordless microphone. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So today, uh, I first of all, I'll ask uh, respected teachers, Seadus and Mahasangha, to speak up a few words that what we have been doing uh, in Sri Lanka uh, after, after we have graduated from IIT. So in order to introduce myself, I'm uh, Magga Bihari. Uh, my name comes as Watagoda Magga Bihari because in Sri Lanka, we use the village name in front of our name. So uh, I entered the university in 2012 and finished my master's course in 2019. Uh, what I have to present today is a group work, collaborative work of uh, my friends whom we studied together, uh, Sri Lankans, all monks, and also some uh, friends who we met in ITBMU. Uh, so after studying from Myanmar uh, in ITBMU and also in monastic educations of my from by my some friends, we established an institute called International Institute of Theravada IIT. Uh, so one thing I have been wondering since my young ages as a monk, uh, how could Buddha establish a system that lasted for thousands of years, uh, giving the authority to the Sangha? So always I see as a young monk is not to disrespect the system that is existing. That is a power centralized system that uh, a very uh, senior shadow, a senior monk is uh, in charge of the monastery. But I see in the long term, this can be detrimental because when the, whenever a person who is not very versed in practice and Dhamma comes into the power, into the chair, uh, the legacies would fall, out, fall down because there have been already good scholars in the world, good practitioners, but their legacy seems not to be continuing. So this has been a wandering question, haunting question in my mind with my, I have been discussing with this, my friends. So then we wanted to establish not a normal, normal monastery, but a system that could last for a long period, even we are no more. So our main endeavor is not to put effort because we are sacrificing our entire lives to establish this system. Uh, but we make sure that when we are no more, that system would last year after. So we base three pillars in our institute. First is education, studies, pariyatti. Second is the practice and vinaya. Third is the governing system. So these are the three pillars. Uh, I'm sorry that I, could, I haven't brought up any PowerPoint, anything. So in the studies, we uh, created three courses. First is called Nisseya Muttakha. I think some of you are, uh, 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 accustomed with this term, Nisya Muttaka is when a monk wants to live alone without the dependence of the teacher, uh, depending on a teacher, on a teacher, they have to have some qualifications, seven qualifications introduced in the text. So we created our curriculum to fulfill these seven uh, qualifications. We could be Kuni Patimukha has to be studied and even memorized and Abhidhamma, the basic Abhidhamma, uh, even Datu Kata Yamaka Patthana, and then some basic sutras. Uh, 
and Pali. Some of the Vipassana included because that's how we got from ITBMU. Uh, then we also created a new course called Parisupattaka. If someone wants to be a teacher, as the Buddha has recommended, there are seven more qualifications that one has to fulfill. So we created a new course called Parisupattaka in order to uh, groom the teaching monks. Then a Bahusutta course, thanks to uh, our Myanmar uh, education, uh, because we have a, a special gem in us, I call it a gem, is an Abhivansa monk who passed the first stage of Abhivansa in Mandalay. Uh, actually, he's one of my students, and he is capable of interpreting the texts as the traditional method says. So we have created three courses in our Pariyatti. Then we are well strict on our Vinaya practice. And also we introduce the meditation techniques as we according to Theravada teachings. Then the thing that I want to emphasize is the governing system. In IIT, we introduced a government because I, I, I once I tell, in the beginning I told, I was, I'm a person who likes the democracy a lot. That's how I been brought up. So, and I also see a huge democracy in the Buddha's Vinaya code. So we established the IIT and we decentralized the power of the IIT. So we uh, put the executive weight on a board called executive board, which is constituted by with seven monks, uh, including ourselves. And it is divided into two, two sects, study council and the monastic council, who is in charge of uh, uh, the education and the monastic well-being. I'm in charge of the study council taking care of all the education matters. And then we established a system called Senate. In this Senate, uh, we give the students, the educated students and the teachers, the capacity to discuss Dhamma, Vinaya, independent of the executive board. And they can even challenge the decisions taken by the executive board and evaluate it against the Dhamma and Vinaya. So that's the independence that we gave. Then in the Vinaya Council, there's another board called Vinaya Council, which has the capacity to investigate all the disciplinary issues that are happening in IIT. And also it has the power sometimes to mitigate the decisions if they seems to be against Dhamma Vinaya, even taken by the executive board. So it's a democratic structure uh, depending on the Buddha's Vinaya. And we always try to collaborate how it is matching with the dinner with us Vinaya. And also we established the 13 officials that we find in Vinaya. So they can take decisions independent of the president of the board. So that's the, uh, because then the president is elected to an election within the system and he has the maximum number of 12 years to serve as the president and he has to resign from the post and then someone else could come into the position. So we make sure that within 15, 18 years, we all are out of the institution. So some new monks, new strength will be governing the system. Uh, and we, as I'll, I'll sum up because the time is, as Sally has said, time is up. I think I have already consumed all the time. So uh, then we, uh, the thing is we, in our curriculum, as we do in, I, did we in NGBMU, we create new textbooks in Sinhala and English. Uh, and we have uh, nine, rep 10 representatives from in, uh, all 10 countries, and they are studying well. And we have finished the first year course. Uh, the first course runs for six years, the Nisya Muttaka course. Now we are entering with the second. As soon as we return back to Sri Lanka on 11th of December, we are st consuming, uh, starting the second year course. And uh, so there are five, four, five alumni in, in from ITBMU. Uh, I myself and my friend uh, Bhante Devananda, uh, Venerable Siddhartha Lankara, Venerable Sangaratana, and uh, we have Venerable Sumana from Laos. So all of us are teaching there and uh, we are publishing books. We are creating new books and we try to impart the knowledge in students, the knowledge we got from Myanmar. So therefore it's very, uh, we are very grateful to this university and to the country as because we, that's from you, from this country, we got the knowledge and we are imparted in Sri Lanka. And we are happily running the institution. So I'm very happy to ex uh, exchange and share my experience uh, that we are having in Sri Lanka, thanks to our uh, respected CRDOs. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much.
Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Venerable Megawi Hari, for how you make your dream of establishing a democratic structure depending on Vinaya, where decisions can be made independent of the <clears throat> chairman and the executive vote, and all your gratitude towards ITVMU. We wish you even more success. For the next, we would like to invite Venerable Dr. Kusala Guna and Venerable Penyagara from Texas, USA, on the Dama JTR project in Texas, USA. Venerables, please. I think we saw the replica of your plan, right? Yeah. In, in front of the yeah, right. yeah, meditation hall is in exhibition. <laughs> yes, that's what I noticed. Yes, please. That's my kid. Mahathira. Thera Mahasangha, Dhamma brother and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kusala Guna, the first batch student at RGBMU, and perhaps I am one of the longest standing foreign students at this university because I joined this university in 2009, in, in um, 1998, and uh, I finished my PhD program here in 2018. So almost 20 years, I stay in at ITBMU. And actually, during this time, I also have a project that's called Pali Romanized Project, initiated by our late rector Sayadaw, Venbo Mos Venbo Silananda Bivangsa, and supported by Venbo Agasami, Vietnamese monk from USA. And uh, I was able to manage and complete it, this um, project in 2008 and luckily and happily this project was used to in engrave on marble slab and now they are housed in Nepidor Mara Wijaya Buddha Park in Nepidor and again, this project will be used to engrave on marble slabs and will be installed in Hung Dao Temple, Texas, USA. That's one of the Vietnamese monasteries in Texas, USA. And now I am standing here happy to introduce you this uh, Dhamma, Vija, Dhamma Chetia project in USA. And actually to study here is very beneficial for me. And RGBMU is one of the, my comfort zone in my life. The comfort zone where I can study, practice Dhamma. And this comfort zone helps me to step out with confidence patience and self-awareness. So again, I'm really grateful to RGBMU University and the Myanmar people from the past to the present. So today, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce the Dhamma Chediya project 
in which I play some role. And now to introduce this project with all of you, I'd like to invite Bambo Banyakara, the executive director of this Dhamma Jediya project. He's one of my Dhamma brothers. So please welcome Bambo Banyakara to introduce this project. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sanghaya, dear respected Sayroji, little monks, nuns, and lay devotees. I am Benyagara from uh, USA. First of all, I would like to pay respect and pay my sincere gratitude to the ITBMU, Rector Sayadaw, and the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to display the 3D model and present the Dhamma Jetia projects with everyone here at the 25th anniversary of Silver Jubilee of the ITBMU. I am Bhikkhu Banyagara, who live in USA, in the state of Texas, the city of Fort Worth. I am a disciple of Most Venerable Ratanaguna Buddha, a Dhamma brother of Most Venerable Dhamma Rakita, Mahathira Bofa, a former scholar of Great Wisdom, Akka Mahapandita. They are the two living disciple of the late ancestral grandmaster Vangsakrakita Mahathira Potong, who was an extraordinary monk with the great Bodhisattva vow. He has one of the grandmaster who initially brought, he was one of the grandmaster who initially brought Theravada Buddhism, Buddhism into Vietnam. And eight years ago, I have made a vow under the sacred Bodhi tree in India to build a um, Dhamma Chetiya project to inscribe all the Tibitaka, the teachings of the Buddha in stone. With this project, it will be built in the city of Fort Worth, Texas, USA. I believe Buddhism will flourish there. It's because United States is a, a cultural event and a multiracial country, multiracial country and freedom. So with this project, Namatiji Chediya projects is consists of 840 large and small stupas was constructed in marble and durable materials. The 840 stupa represent for 84,000 dhammakandas, consisting of the teachings of the Buddha Gautama, the profound, pure, and practical truth, the way of life filled with mindfulness and awareness, the message of compassion, wisdom, and liberation. At this site, teachings of the Gautama Buddha and his and his holy disciple 
collected in the three Pali basket Tipitaka will be stored in this stupa, the teaching will be engraved on more than 3,000 stone slabs in Romanized Pali, English, while this inscription of the bronze books will be in Sinhala. Sinhala, Burmese, Khmer, Thai, Laotians, and Vietnamese. The following of the completion of this construction of the stupa site will serve several purposes. The Museum of Truth, a center for the preservation of Buddhist culture and art, a great and beautiful Buddhist library, a center for studying, learning, practicing, and applying 40 tranquility meditation topics, 21 objects of vipassana meditations, and the four foundation of mindfulness meditations. A center for both short and long-term meditation retreats for everyone, regardless of ethnic city, race, or religion. This project is both in noble aspiration and straight application for all monks, nuns, and Buddhists, from around the world. The vision driving this construction is to expand the study, practice, propagation, and preservation of the Dhamma. For this, the intellectual contribution, the knowledge of Pali taught Tibitaka from monks, nuns, and who specialize in, in Dhamma learning and practice will be both valuable and necessary for this work. Also, Donation from all Buddhists and generous sponsors, whether in the United States or the world, will be an essential contribution towards the quick completion of the Stupas projects. Just imagine a person who is diligently studying, practicing, and achieving Nibbana because of this Dhamma Chetiya project. He or she then can share those benefits with countless others for generations to come. That individual then will have a profound impact on all beings and make history. So what is the result of giving the, giving the Dhamma? Yeah. So with this, with this great vow, those may those with the same aspiration faith and goal join hands to contribute to building this meaningful and unique how of righteous dhamma and preserving the dhamma treasure passed by the buddha passed on by the buddha may the, this dhamma chetiya helps sentient be in succeed in attending nibbana last but not least we will be hosting an event of the first tipitaka chanting the International Vesak and the Groundbreaking Ceremony in 2025 from May 4 to May 11. We respectfully invited all venerable monks and all of you to join this special event, especially the International Theravada Buddhist Missionary University. May the ITBMU continue to carry out a great mission with great success for many years to come. And together we can serve and we'll protect, preserve the Buddha teachings. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to present this project. Thank you very much, Venerable Banyagara, for your best wishes to ITBMU. And we wish our sincere, uh, we convey our sincere wish that this noble project would be completed. Yeah, in the allotted time. Now we have the refreshment break, which we all look forward to. So actually, our second part is scheduled to start at 9.35. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight students. Eight students mean 40 minutes, right? 40 minutes, but all is more. So maybe uh, about 10 minutes or plus, please do come back, maximum 15 minutes, okay? Please do come back and join again, we will start. And we, uh, in the 
afternoon at 12.30, there will be a discussion tour in city. So it would include the visit to the National Museum Market and finally met up again at the Sri Dagon Pagoda. It said that's for alumni only, the, the information from the registrar office. Sorry for that. But yeah, so please come back again after 15 minutes maximum. Yeah, please enjoy your refreshment. And we look forward to meeting you again soon. Thank you.
please come back. It's very precious and a good opportunity to hear the experience of our alumni, which we can't get in the next day. <clears throat> Please come back again and we will resume our second session again soon. Yeah. Your met with their sound name. Yeah. It's not sound name. Your hand on it. But she's a little bit. So the next speaker is Venerable Tu Maitro Bande from Laos. Could you please be silent if we're going to start the session very soon? Yeah, I would like to request you to be in silent and please pay attention to our speaker. Venerable Sumetro Bande from Laos, who would be speaking on what ITBMU has given to me. Yes, Venerable Sumetro, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So first of all, uh, may I give me to uh, three podiums, respect the uh, most venerable and teachers and uh, distinguished guests. I'm very happy and very honored to be here uh, to witness the achievements of uh, ITBMU for past uh, 25 years. Actually, I don't have uh, any uh, special thing to share with all of you, no any uh, accomplishment or achievement for myself because I'm uh, an MBA uh, student final year. So what I just want to share is uh, what I, I have or what ITBMU has given to me uh, during these uh, few years. I have joined uh, this university in 2015. So now uh, I'm doing MBA final year. So to be honest, uh, ITBMU uh, has given a lot to me and I think to all of you as well. And most alumni here, I'm very uh, happy and very excited to know what they have done after graduation from ITBMU. What uh, ITBMU has given to me, like, an opportunity for me, uh, an opportunity to learn the authentic Tama of Theravada Buddhism, opportunity to practice Dhamma, opportunity to uh, experience magnificent Myanmar cultures and traditions, an opportunity to make new friends among different countries. Before coming here to Myanmar, and when I was in Laos, I feel like I was uh, interested in Buddhism, but uh, I didn't have the chance to uh, put my own effort and good environment. So I thought at that time I was, I was good. Uh, uh, in Buddhism knowledge, Buddhist knowledge. But when I came to Myanmar, wow, it's like a, you know, like a frog in the, in the small ponds and go to see the, the sea, the, the ocean, the wonderful. 
So I have learned a lot just in diploma course. I feel very impressed with uh, uh, the uh, we call uh, systematical curriculum uh, laid out by the university. I have uh, the university has provide uh, food accommodation. We have a lot of free time, <laughs> and very importantly, and especially free Wi-Fi. I think <laughs> it's very important for us. And it's depend on you. Uh, the university try to make you comfort. The, uh, the teachers don't try to to make you feel stress in learning and staying here. But it's depend on you how you manage yourself, manage your uh, to grab opportunity you have. So that is uh, the opportunity to learn the Dharma. I honestly.